Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan, MSP, so Ukraine War News Update addendum to the first video of the day. Andrew Perpetua's released his loss stats and I want to just go through them and not take up time on my military aid video, partly because they are so freaking big. But that's because he's separated out today civilian from military vehicles. And what you see on the screen at the moment are the essentially the combat losses and you can add ATVs like four wheelers and Desert Cross 1003s onto that compared to uh, this, which is civilian losses. Just some phenomenal uh, and also I think surveillance and comms quit kit on there as well some phenomenal listing going on there just insane we're going to stay on the military equipment to begin with and actually andrew kindly gives some information with his tweet here so 110 vehicles for the russians and the ukrainians have 34 so just from a pure stats point of view across both those sheets we have a three to one uh, loss ratio. So that's good for the Ukrainians. Like 37 are civilian vehicles and we're going to look at them uh, later. And then we have 29 combat losses uh, and the Ukrainians have 16 combat losses. So that's not quite two to one. And that is a shame because the uh, the Ukrainians would definitely want uh, a two to one there. It doesn't include, I think, ATVs and trucks in the combat losses, although it's included on this kind of military equipment sheet. Um, so anyway, yeah, we have, uh, I guess, if we look at the destroyed against damage, so brown and black are your worst and your grey are better. Ukrainians have a better balance, I would have thought, of destroyed to damaged. Um, if you look, say, for example, the uh, infantry fighting vehicles, there's only one destroyed and the rest are damaged. And with the Russians, they have, what, two thirds uh, destroyed there. So I think the Russians have slightly more destroyed. But anyway, we'll look at the value of the kit, bearing in mind that all kit is valuable to particularly the Ukrainians. Now, we have uh, one decoy for each of these or, or something hit that wasn't um either wasn't what it's supposed to be or it hit a tree or something like that and is, is claimed by the russians as a hit we have a radar here hit uh, antpq 48 that's going to hurt the ukrainians uh, these are high value bits of kit that are necessary for your air defense network and target acquisition and whatnot uh, we have some boats there taken out and then a couple of artillery pieces a few tanks some infantry fighting vehicles interest interestingly there are six IFVs, four of them are Bradleys, three destroyed, one damage, and two of them are BMPs. That again confirms that the Ukrainians are using a lot more Western equipment than they were previously, uh, especially when you add that uh, the APC and MRAP, both of those were Western as well, Humvee and a Max Pro. Um, so that is, uh, yeah, the radar is a bit of a loss for the, uh, the Ukrainians there. Now, when we come to the Russian losses, uh, we have an engineering vehicle, uh, some boats taken out and then in the artillery section a few d20s and 30s and whatnot some older bits of kit nothing too valuable tanks usual spread t72s t80s uh, some others uh, infantry fighting vehicles largely uh, destroyed or abandoned bmp2s uh, some bmp1s as well and for the apcs we have uh, mtlbs and a couple of tiger m's some ural trucks Desert Cross 1003 and four wheelers and whatnot. So a lot of equipment for the Russians lost there, but probably not in terms of military combat equipment as much as the Ukrainians would like in terms of their losses. So as I say, uh, about a two to one and they really need more than that. And that radar might hurt a little bit. And then when we come to the civilian losses, just some phenomenal uh, losses here and obviously the you can see there that the ukrainians have a huge advantage in in these categories with a, a tremendous amount of bukankas motorcycles pickup trucks all sorts being destroyed uh, by the ukrainians the russian equipment destroyed by the ukrainians as well as a whole suite of comms equipment almost certainly from a single video there as you can see listed in chronological order um so the Ukraine is working hard to take out the the Russian comms equipment. 
Uh, Ukrainians themselves losing mainly pickup trucks there, which is nothing unusual. But I think that would be definitely in favour of the Ukrainians on that side of things. And this will affect, um, well, there's a couple of things. This will affect logistics, obviously. But actually, a lot of these might end up with personnel losses as well. So when you go to Bacankas and motorcycles particularly, and if we go back to the Desert Cross 1000-3, when these vehicles are being hit really commonly, and the Ukrainians aren't being hit in those vehicles so much, the, these will involve loss of life or, or serious injury, as the no doubt the drones, the FPV drones, slam into a motorcycle or a golf buggy, you are going to have much more injury. Uh, so th I think this this will coincide with high personnel losses, and, and that's exactly what we are seeing on a daily basis. The number today was 1,180, which is no small matter for the Russians. Um, then it says, honorable mentions, Russians claim to have hit a howitzer with a lancet, but I see no evidence it hit the howitzer. It is listed as a tree decoy. They also claim to have hit a helicopter with an Iskander. The video editing makes the evidence unconvincing. That's what we talked about earlier, or I talked about that in a previous video. And he seems to think actually that, that not so convincing that helicopter was taken out. Russians also intentionally hunted down and destroyed the Ukrainian police drone, uh, SUV, sorry. And he does um, have a video on his Twitter thread about, uh, thread about that feed. Uh, he constantly rails Andrew against these kind of terroristic attacks by the Russians hitting either outright civilians like purposefully not by mistake hunting down civilians with FPV drones and drone drop munitions hitting civilian vehicles overtly civilian vehicles and police vehicles just going about their work doing just police work uh, these are emergency services and the Russians are purposefully uh, targeting them so that is that is an act of terrorism um, yeah so some really large scale losses there and goodness me that all of that takes time for Andrew and his team to identify to geolocate to codify and or categorize and uh, present here so thank you so much to Andrew for doing that if you can support his work please find him on on Twitter or go to his map and follow links to support him uh, on PayPal um, and that is that would be very kind uh, it, it it is a is a great service to us all. I think having all this information out there, uh, it's fantastic. So uh, th that's the loss list for today. Uh, the TLDR is so so in the uh, combat asset losses for Ukraine, but pretty devastating hits on Russian civilian vehicles and surveillance and comms equipment there uh, that will you know have an effect on the Russian ability to. Uh, commit to this war and it and also it might tell you so if you're starting to see fewer and fewer combat losses and then you get this parity of or approaching parity of russian to ukrainian losses you might look at that and go oh the russians are doing better on the battlefield but what that does is possibly mask the the endemic problems that russia has is that that's because they aren't using APCs on a battlefield. They're not using infantry fighting vehicles on a battlefield. They're using bloody golf carts and motorcycles and bukankas. And we see that because instead of hitting vast numbers of IFVs, they're hitting vast numbers of other vehicles. So on the one hand, ah, oh, damn it, combat losses aren't as, as bad as they should be. But on the other hand, well, hey, that's brilliant that they're not as bad because it shows that they don't have them. So the Ukrainians are having to hit other vehicles instead. And that is what the Russians are arguably attacking with. We saw that Vukhodar, um bit of footage uh, and imagery showing a, just a, a graveyard of people around 28 motorcycles and a couple of APCs. That is what we're talking about here. So that's a failed attack, but it gets listed as civilian vehicles. And you think, oh, you know, they haven't taken enough military equipment. No, they, they are, that is their military equipment. That is the, the way that they are attacking at least in certain circumstances. So uh, the, this data analysis ho hopefully does tell, or the data that's presented here hopefully does tell us a story uh, and gives us a picture of, of the kind of activity taking place on the front lines. Thanks again to Andrew. Take care, y'all, and I'll speak to you soon.